the walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low, and all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have our chat, for some of us are out of breath, and all of us are fat. <laughs> now hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Mm -hmm. uh, pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but, Cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick, the carpenter said nothing but, The butt is spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. A oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none, and this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten every one. The Walrus and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll, read by John Sindel. This was a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain.